Well, good morning and welcome to This Week at Little Hills. I'm glad to be with you again on this Memorial Day weekend. What a joy it is that we can be together and hear about God's faithfulness in the Psalms. And as we look towards this weekend, we're going to be celebrating God's faithfulness also tomorrow night as we continue to gather in person at Little Hills on Sunday evenings. I hope you'll join us at 5.30 p.m. as we continue our series in the Beatitudes and we sing praises to our God. It will be a joyful way to spend Memorial Day Sunday. And there's lots more going on at Little Hills as well. We have our men's Bible study going through Romans on Thursday nights. And we are wrapping up Bad Attitudes, our series going through different figures in the Bible that you probably haven't spent a lot of time on and their bad attitudes towards God. That's on Monday night. So Sunday night worship, Monday night we're digging deeper into unusual figures in the Bible, and then our men's Bible study on Wednesday, rather Thursday, going through Romans. So I hope that you'll join us for those. But right now we're going to look at the Psalms. Let's go ahead and turn to this week's Psalms, which are Psalms 64, 65, and 66. And throughout the coming week, as we gather together and do all these different things, we'll also be discussing online these Psalms. And I hope that you will consider going to grow.faithtree.com and we'll be looking at Psalm 64 by Monday, Psalm 65 by Wednesday, Psalm 66 by Friday. And you can share your questions, your comments, your insights, whatever comes to you as you read through these Psalms. Well, let's start with Psalm 64. And in Psalm 64, we see once again, David is crying out to God about those who oppose him. And we see this sort of summed up in verse 5. David says, They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, Who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, We have accomplished a diligent search, for the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. But, notice this in verse 7, But God shoots his arrows at them. They are wounded suddenly. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Isn't that the way it is when we're contemplating, do I really need to do what God has called me to do? Can I get away with less? Can I get away with something that I even know is outright wrong? We say, well, no one will notice, but we're told God notices. And that's true when we're the ones doing the wrong, and it's also true when we're receiving the wrong and experiencing it, and we think, does anyone care? God notices he's the ultimate judge, he's the righteous judge, and, and so it's a call to us on both sides. As sinners, we're called to recognize God sees the things we're doing, and we desperately need to turn towards him. We need his forgiveness. We need his righteousness because we can't provide our own. But then as we're following him, we're wondering, why does he allow bad things to happen? Why does he allow us to struggle? We're told none of this is going past him. God isn't surprised. God isn't being tricked. God is aware. And so as, as David ends this psalm, we can join in saying, Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exalt. And that's an invitation for anyone who trusts in Jesus. And, and today's a great day to do that if you haven't ever trusted in Jesus. Because anyone who does, anyone who confesses his or her sins and comes before him, can be a part of the righteous, not because we get everything right, but because he declares us righteous. And then we are in that judge's family and he's there and we know ultimately he'll make things right, just as, as Psalm 64 says. Let's continue on to Psalm 65, another Psalm of David. And in this one, this is just a beautiful hymn about God's faithfulness. We've been talking about that in Psalm 64, how God is faithful. And here we're reminded of how God can be faithful. Because I can have the best of intentions and even try to execute those intentions. But there are many situations I don't have control over. And I can only do so much to make those good intentions happen. But notice what we're told about God here. Verse 1, David says, Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. But what does he go on? He, he talks about all the amazing things God does. For example, notice verse 5. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, 
the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. We see God is in control of nature. He's in control, ultimately, of people as well. And he goes on and he describes, I hope when we get to this psalm on Wednesday, you take time to, to really drink in those last verses, 9 to 13, as he describes how God tends to the entirety of his creation, his earth, as we might our garden, only perfectly. And so it's such a beautiful picture of how God is truly in control. And what a reassuring thing on those times we're feeling out of control and we're wondering if anyone actually does have control. We've had a, a horrible tragedy happen earlier this week and, and the nation's been mourning after that horrible school shooting. And, and, we, and we think, is anyone really in control? And here, as in 64, we're assured God is in control. He sees what is wrong. He will make it right. And he has the power to make it right, unlike us. What great hope we find in that. David goes on, and we'll look at this psalm on Friday, Psalm 66. Or rather, David doesn't go on. This is just a, a an unlabeled psalm. We don't have an author on this one. But it would have once again been a psalm sung by the people of God. And it's a song in which we praise God as the corporate people of God. Notice verse 1, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. And the psalm goes through that corporate praise, that, that what we're called to do, why we gather together on Sunday nights now at Little Hills, and why the church around the world gathers together. Why do we do that? Because as God's people, we're called to come together and to celebrate God's goodness together. And we help each other to see that goodness as we draw together and do that. But it's really interesting. Commentators note that this psalm shifts because it starts with that, that corporate, we're all celebrating together God's goodness. Look how good he is. Look how wonderful and faithful he is. But then it goes on in verse 13, it shifts. It says, I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows. And it goes on to describe the wondrous faithfulness of God to an individual. And it reminds us that God's faithfulness is to us as the people of God and as an individual person coming to worship God. He notices us, every single one of us. He notices you. He notices me. And then he calls us to be together with the rest of his people. What an encouragement that is. He gives us a people, but we're not too small or insignificant to be noticed individually as well. Hope that encourages you this week. What a joy it has been to be with you as we go through these psalms once again. Please do go to grow.faithtree.com as we go through them throughout the week. Don't forget those other upcoming opportunities to be the people of God together. I hope to see you there. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed holiday weekend. I'll see you again soon.